Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to be making a mini head knife. A head knife or a round knife is used for leather work. I don't have one and I want one. So today we're going to be making this prototype mini head knife because I only have steel right now that it is one and a half inches wide. A real head knife is normally much larger than this one. They normally have a rounded portion along with a kind of a half moon point at one end or sometimes both ends, actually traditionally both ends. But today I'm going to be trying to make this little one and we'll see how it performs when I'm done. I also want to note that this steel is an eighth of an inch thick, which is too thick for a head knife. So you will see me taking this steel down substantially so that it can be a good working head knife. As you've seen, I have profiled this blade. I like getting all of the profile up to around a 220 grit finish. Right here, I actually went a little too deep with my small wheel attachment, and I am hand sanding out the hump that was created by getting too aggressive with my small wheel attachment. I'm marking off my holes. I'll be using eighth inch pins and some scrap wood from my scrap bin for the handle. Since this is going to be a tool for my workshop, I didn't want to expend resources by using a new slab of wood. However, by using these two cutoffs, I actually got a really pretty knife out of this project. To affix these handle scales, I will be using 1 8 of an inch brass pins. I get the dicom layout fluid off of the flats of this blade, and then I'm going to put in some jimping along the spine so that I have a little bit more control and gription when I'm using this tool. This is the checkering file I'll be using for my jimping. I have pretty much been using this on every knife after getting it and I'm very happy with its performance. After I get the jimping put into the spine, I will be heat treating this blade in my forge. The heat treatment on this head knife will be slightly different than what I normally do. Since I don't expect there to be a lot of flex on this knife, I'm going to be tempering it at a lower temperature to maintain the max amount of hardness I can in this 1084. I will be heat treating or quenching in Parks 50 for four seconds, around four seconds, and then I will clamp it within my straightening jig. This ensures that the blade stays straight while it continues to cool. As you just saw here, the blade is nice and hard, and I put it into my tempering oven for two two-hour cycles at around 400 degrees Fahrenheit. You may have noticed that I added some heat shield to the front of my tempering oven. Surprisingly enough, this has made a huge difference in how fast my oven heats up and then how easily it stays at temperature. Using my granite surface plate and some sandpaper, I get all of the pieces for my handle material uh, flat, and then we will be using some G10 spacer material as a base for our pieces. The front of the handle scales will be ebony, and the back of the handle scales will be ironwood. Like I said, at first I was just looking for some scrap to throw together a handle, but at the end of the day, it actually turns out to be really pretty with the finished product. In between tempering cycles and after the last cycle, I will cool off the blade to room temperature quickly in the water and then get back to tempering for the next cycle. This is what the blade looks like after being tempered. Before I take it to the surface grinder, I want to get the profile of the blade up to a 220 grit finish. As I mentioned, this is around an eighth of an inch stock, so I have a lot of material to remove. Using a 120 grit ceramic shredder belt from Combat Abrasives, I take this material down substantially. My last grit is going to be a 280 grit gator belt. This will give me a nice finish to work off of for the remainder of the build. A 
a good width would be around 0 0.045 to around 0 0.07. So after I got to 0 0.06, or about 60 thousandths, I decided to call it good. Grinding a head knife has shown to be pretty difficult. It took me a while to kind of get my motion down pat, and I must say that I feel like it's a fairly dangerous blade to grind. So if you are going to be attempting a head knife, please be extremely careful when grinding. That little point could easily get caught into the belt and throw the whole knife down. I started with a 60 grit belt and then made some passes with a 220 grit belt. The edge I got to around two to four thousandths of an inch, which is pretty thin. I have heard that these are generally ground to zero, so I feel like I'm in the ballpark. I know this is probably not necessary, but I took the flats of the blade up to a 320 grit hand sanded finish, just because I want it to be a nice looking package at the end of the day. Once I have the blade up to a 320 grit finish, I take the handle scales, make sure they're flat, clamp them to the blade, and use the blade as a drill guide to drill my eighth of an inch holes for my four brass pins. Then I cut off the bulk of the material. I want to mention that during the alignment and drilling process, I actually made a crucial mistake. I got these handle scales slightly offset from each other, which is noticeable in the finished product. The center lines of both sides of the scales where the ebony and ironwood meet do not line up, and if I was making a knife, this would scrap the entire project. However, since it's a tool for my shop, it is a lesson learned that is not nearly as painful. Using my new vise and some aluminum jaws, I clamp the handle scales into the jaws so that I can clean up the front of these scales to a thousand grit. Now it's on to the glue up, but before we do that, I need to take the pins down. My eighth of an inch drill bits, which I have about 15 of them because I ordered them in bulk, are ever so slightly under an eighth of an inch. This is not a big deal because taking the pin stock down with a little bit of sandpaper in my drill press barely takes any time at all, and I get a nice tight fit by doing so. I mixed up a little bit of epoxy, and I'm actually going to be using the Rogue Epoxy from Combat Abrasives to put together this head knife. I made sure to get the epoxy in every nook and cranny, and then gently clamped the scales on to the knife. I say gently because if you go too aggressive with these C-clamps, you can easily squeeze the glue out from the joint. Within 12 hours, the glue had hardened substantially, and we are ready to finish off this knife. I cut off the bulk of the pin material, and then take the knife to the belt sander to get all of the flats nice and flat. That is, the sides of the knife, and also bring the handle scale down to the spine. I'm using a fairly aggressive 60 grit belt, to do this. Once I have the sides of the knife nice and flat, I will use my work rest to get the profile of the knife down to the spine. I'll start with a 60 grit belt on the work rest and I'll actually move to a 220 grit belt on the work rest to knock off the bulk of the scratches. I'll then round the scales on the sides and then use a slack belt to round everything over and contour the handle. Then clamping the knife in my knife vise, I take it from a 320 grit finish to a 600 grit finish, and then I end with a 1000 grit finish on this tool. I really like how the wood turned out and the brass contrast is really nice as well. I actually forgot that I had these diamond stones, but I have two diamond stones from my Edge Pro sharpening system that I'll be using to sharpen this blade. The first one is a 140 grit stone, and the second one is a 400 grit stone. These were able to get this blade nice and sharp. However, I will mention that it took me some time to figure out the stroke with this odd shaped blade. And then strop it with a piece of leather and do a couple of test cuts. The head knife cuts just fine. It will take me a little bit of time, I think, to get used to the technique of using this knife. A traditional head knife, the pointy end actually hangs down a little further and I think that would aid 
in the use of this knife. But I'll use it over the next couple of months and we'll see how it goes. I figured throwing this extremely sharp head knife into my leather tools loosely would be dangerous. So in order to prevent cutting myself down the road, I will be making a little pouch sheath to accommodate this knife. This sheath will be made out of some scrap imported leather that is around an eight to nine ounce leather. So it's nice and thick. I wanted to not only make this sheath because I felt like it was dangerous to be loose in my leather tools, but I also wanted to get some more reps when it came to making leather sheaths. Another nice thing about making this pouch is that I was able to do it in about two hours and since this doesn't need to be a very refined product and I won't be selling this at all this allowed me to kind of rush through a sheath and get some more experience with the whole process of sheath making but not really be worried about making mistakes. Specifically it allowed me to practice my saddle stitch and I would love some feedback if I'm doing this wrong but I'm pretty sure I have the locking saddle stitch down pat with this sheath. In the past I actually did not throw that cord back over on my right hand and I don't think I was throwing a locking saddle stitch on my previous sheaths. So this is how the entire package turned out. This little pouch sheath has a good deal of retention so this head knife will not be falling out of it and I will not be cutting myself when rummaging through my tools to find it. The contrast between the brass pins, the ebony, the red spacer and the ironwood actually turned out really pretty and I'm happy I dug into my scrap pile to make this knife. As far as the profile of this prototype head knife goes, I am not sure and will have to use it for a few months before I can give it my stamp of approval. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video and if you did hit that like button down below and consider subscribing to the channel. It'll really help us out. Until the next time, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.